I'm Stephen Foskett, the organizer of Tech Field Day, and this is uh, Storage Field Day 11 coming to you from San Francisco. We invite a group of independent uh, bloggers, podcasters, and other IT influencers to come from around the world to discuss and learn and interact with interesting companies. Uh, this morning, we're at Scality, and if you'd like to learn more about this presentation or any others, you can go to techfieldday.com. If you'd like to see some more videos from this, you can find them at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So I'm Giorgio Oeni, CTO and co-founder of Scality, and I'm going to talk about uh, how we calculate and achieve durability uh, in the wing. So, uh, so first of all, you need to agree on the definition of durability. So it's the probability of not losing data over one year. Right? And example, so Amazon durability, so it's counted in number of nines. So if you look at the S3, the standard S3, uh, it's a 39, so 99.119. Uh, so that means that if you store 10,000 objects, you can expect that uh, you will lose one object every 10 million years. That's kind of give you an idea. So the more objects you have, the more exposure you get. Uh, but 39 uh, gives you this level of protection. So when, when we design our storage, uh, you've seen the mathematics that we use in, in the cluster, we actually design it in such a way that uh, we can compute durability estimate very, um, very, very accurately. So um, what, what are the factors that really influence durability? So there's a ton of factors that influence it, but if I were to pick the top four, that's going to be uh, the uh, mean time to failure on the drives, right? So that's going to be between 100,000 100, hours to uh, 220,000 hours, depending on the drives you buy. So meaning that uh, could expect the drives to fail after 100,000 hours of one time, the probability. Uh, then the speed at which you detect the failures themselves. So how fast do you detect failures on the drives? So that's a really important aspect. Then you have uh, the speed at which you reconstruct data. So we call it rebuild. But, uh, so how fast you detect, then how fast can you actually rebuild data from the over existing copies or from the parodies in the system? Um, then you have geo distribution. So when you do another copy on a different site, you dramatically improve durability. Right? Uh, and so this is the four main contributors to durability and how we actually use them. So we have a tool that runs automatically. I talk about the key space and how we manipulate uh, generate key spaces. So it's, it's called SPROV. You actually look at it from a mathematical point of view. So I told you about the ring and the projection for the replicas. So you actually uh, define your um, topology. So I have multiple racks, multiple data centers, multiple servers with 80 drives, and this is the mean time to failure on my drives. And it's actually going to compute all the projection of copies and replicas. It's also going to compute uh, things like, what happens if I lose a node? Right? If I lose this node, now I have to rebuild it. What about if I lose another node at the same time? It's actually doing all these checks automatically and doing a lot of simulation to produce a key space that gives us the best durability. So I will show a key space afterwards. Um, the rebuild, so it's the ability to actually um, discover failures. And so um, we are kind of, this is some of the changes we did to code is this algorithm. Uh, we, we can quickly detect missing object doing only in-memory operations. Then repair, so when a drive has been detected as failed, we actually are going to trigger a disk repair event in the system very, very quickly. And we're going to ask uh, all the nodes that have pieces of data that should be on that disk. So it could be six nodes with each 80 servers. So we're going to use those 400 drives all at the same time to try to rebuild as fast as possible. And I will show you some numbers afterwards. And then we can be deployed over multiple sites. So, um, we talked about how we project data on the, on the circle. That means that for rebuilding, so let's say that five is stored on this machine. So that's on the node that is a key below the object. So five is stored here. Uh, there should be a replica over here. So this node is always making a list of keys and where they should replicate. And it's going to ask as a batch command, takes a thousand keys, projects them, makes a, make a checksum out of all of this is going to ask this node, or this one, uh, do you have the same checksum for these keys, right? 
And this happens all the time in the, in the system. The actual algor algorithm is Merkle trees. And uh, it actually includes the checksum uh, that we think the object should have. So this happens all the time. All the nodes are asking the projecting nodes, uh, do you have these same keys and do you have the same checksum? In case they say yes, we move on to the next batch of 1,000 keys. And if they say no, then we're going to check each key individually. And so this one's all the time. And on a platform with billions of objects, we actually check the uh, entire key space multiple times per day. Because the algorithm is very efficient. It's all memory and network. So this tells me, so if I lose that machine, another one takes over, I will immediately detect with this algorithm that I'm missing object, and I will start to push them to that machine. Right? Uh, it, it really is fast because of this projection and this circle. It allows us to uh, calculate all the locations as opposed to having to look up somewhere in the database. Um, so <laughs> this is the, uh, uh, some of the internal papers about the SPROF tools and how it actually uh, works. So well, that, that explains it. Thanks. I was getting it useful. before, but now I've got it. Yeah. No, no, you got it. I thought it was code uh, <laughs> The important thing uh, on, on that side is uh, uh, all the, the simulation um, kind of simulate multiple key spaces, and we actually have a fitness function of a key space, and always give you the best possible key space we can, we can think. Um, so this is what the tools gives you back, and I, I will explain how that works. Uh, so these are, these are a lot of servers, so it's hard to understand. So this one is only six servers. So each uh, server is a different color. And so this is my key space that I folded over multiple turns. So that's my entire key space is over multiple turns. Because uh, it's a system that will do up to six copies. That's why I have six turns. Right? So if I store an object in that piece of the key space on that machine, if I do a copy of that object, if I ask for two copies, they will go on that machine, then that machine. And you see that it's a different color each time. So I'm alternating server as I'm doing replicas. So if I go to six copies, they will all fall on different machines. And this works everywhere in my uh, circle. And so if you have 200 machines and you're going to do 12 pieces for a washer code, the same algorithm applies, the same algorithm guarantees that it's always going to fall on a different machine. Now in, in a case of uh, server loss, we're going to guarantee that it's still going to fall on a different machine. And that's where the algorithm becomes tricky. It has to test for all these failures. So even if I lose a machine, I still guarantee that all the replicas fall on a different machine. So there's a point where you have lost too many servers, so, that, 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 so it doesn't work anymore. But this is how we achieve very high durability, is because of this uh, mathematical proof of where the data is going to be placed in case of failure. So it's not enough to be placed properly on the nominal case, it has to be placed properly in case of failure. And that's what this uh, tool does. Um, the next aspect of durability is uh, how do you quickly rebuild missing data. Uh, and so that's a benchmark that was uh, done by a disk vendor. Uh, so I have uh, six servers uh, filled to 20% uh, of, of data. It's a mix of erasure code and uh, replication, 50-50. Uh, so it's around 100 gigabyte used per disk. Uh, each disk is a four terabyte disk. Uh, and so we're going to repair a single disk. So when you repair one disk, because of the way we manipulate the key space, there's a five uh, physical server that have data they're going to try to push you to rebuild. Now each of these uh, server uh, has load balance the traffic to its drive. So all of the drives are a little bit of data for you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do all of that in parallel. So you have a power of hundreds of drives trying to rebuild your data. And so at the end of the day, we repaired exactly 170, uh, 571 gigabytes and uh, at the speed of 400 megabytes per second. So this, this is faster than what a SQL drive can do. Right? Mm. Because we rebuild on the remaining drives of the machine. So if the machine had 90 drives, so you're looking at 90 times five serv drives on the side of the one that has the replicas, writing into the 89 drives left on the machine. So that's why we get so much, so, such high throughput. So when we modelize um, our rebuilding uh, for durability, uh, we always, uh, basically you need to rebuild in less than 24 hours. Right? Uh, if it takes you more time 
and actually we can simulate these kind of things, there's a point where uh, you cannot rebuild fast enough and the system is going to explode. So if it takes more than uh, two days to rebuild and you're using SMR drives of uh, 12 terabyte, just it's not going to converge, right? And so we do this kind of calculation in advance. Um, so I think we have the fastest rebuild throughput uh, on the planet. <laughs> erasure coding. Um, so um, the way that we do erasure coding is uh, we're going to take an object, split, split it into pieces. So in that case, nine plus three. So nine pieces for the object. They will be stored on nine different servers. And then we compute parities. Uh, we keep these uh, nine intact, they're not encrypted, they're not erasure coded. So if you want to read the data and there's no failure, you go directly to these pieces. You don't have to compute anything. You go directly to where uh, the data is in clear. In case of error, you go to the parities and you use them to rebuild uh, missing pieces. So the, the criticism of that from the people that do the <laughs> alternative is that in a large ring, you're always going to be in some level of failure and that, that there's time involved in first looking for the original pieces and then going to get the other pieces if mm -hmm. the original pieces are unavailable. So if you go back to the algorithm, I showed about how we access the, the data. Uh -huh. So you, we do a find, you actually do find on the 12, uh -huh. all in parallel. Uh -huh. One of them will not answer because the data is missing. Uh -huh. You know that right away just right. this fine command. Uh -huh. And when you open the transaction, you only do it on um, eight plus one parity, okay. and you go on. So it doesn't okay. really add a lot of latency. Okay, so, you, so you're, you're actually asked, because other approaches, you know, they just, is that, any, is that any different than the other approaches that ask for all 12 and then just take the first nine? Is that, is that different so, than so, that? So the big difference is uh, if I have a, like a large 32 meg object, I only need to read one kilobyte. With your approach that uh, you need to compute, you need to get all 32 megs of all the different pieces, then compute, and then serve. In that case, I can go directly to the object that has my uh, 100K I'm asking, and do a seek and get it. I don't have to get all nine and compute something. So it's a huge difference on the random IO for read. For, for write, it doesn't change much. Right. For read, uh, random IO reading, it's a huge difference. Well, what about if you've, well, in, in the example there, you've shown the sort of the, a bit of geo distribution. So, is there an impact in terms of the fact that some might come back with a slower response because they're physically further away and you end up recalculating parity because they're further away yeah. rather than because they're just the, they're, they're physically available? Yeah, um, I actually use polio problem. This is a RAC1 and RAC2. This is a single site. Uh, I have a slide about multiple sites, so I, I'll move to it to be easier to explain. Okay. Um, so on 9 plus 3 on one side, you get the equivalent of three uh, replicas in terms of durability, and that, uh, I forgot, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9 of durability. Uh, if, if you do two sites this time and uh, 5 plus 7, then you get 49 of durability. That means that you can lose one site plus one drive, basically, right? And if you have rough site, you can lose seven drives at any point in time. Right? Um, in terms of what happens if you do a, a get operation, uh, so let's say that this is my ring, I have a connector here, it's going to do uh, all the um, find in parallel. I will take the one that answers the fastest to reply. So if they're going to be local if everything is okay. Uh, because you have very little latency locally. And if you're missing a local object, it will wait for the answer from the remote site. So in nominal case, you have a latency of, of your site uh, locally. Uh, in the case where you lost something, you have to wait for the other site. Um, if you do, um, so this one is a seven plus five uh, which is equivalent to five copies. It gives you a 14 of durability as well. And I think the last one, oh, that's it. Um, which is typically something you spread over three sites, right? But when you do three sites, you're not worried about latency. You're just worried about high durability, right? And so you will have to go to multiple sites each time to get your data. And what about writes? Do, are, you, are you asynchronously sending the other stuff or are you? So in that case, it's asynchronous. 
So you write the data locally first? Uh, so in this case, 7 plus 5, you, you wait for all of the parities to be written before you answer. Okay. Yeah. Synchronous. So I, I would, it's synchronous. I would say that. To, oh, you said it's synchronous. Okay. Okay. So it's synchronous. Okay. Because <laughs> you worry about durability, not latency. Right. In, the, right. in, in, in that case. Right. And so typically, an archive or something like that, you would tolerate the latency, <coughs> but you have 14 ends of durability. <coughs> 